A web service consists of a function or a family of functions made available on the World Wide Web. You're able to send requests to the web service and retrieve a response that includes the data that you wanted. The virtual training company provides a web service when you view lessons online. Through your web browser, you send in a request, and the response you get is the viewable lesson. There are hundreds of web services available. You can get stock quotes, mortgage rates, language translations, golf handicap calculations, area codes for cities, airport information, currency conversions, and so on. This website maintains a list of available services, and they have links to them so you can try them out. Most of them work from a web page where you enter your query and the information comes back. Not all of them are implemented using J2EE, but J2EE works, and I'll show you how to build a Java web service in the next few lessons. A web service uses configuration and control data in standard formats of XML, SOAP, and HTTP. To invoke software remotely, there exists RPC, Remote Procedure Calls. There are different forms of RPC, such as Sun's RPC Technology and DCE, which is Distributed Computing Environment. There are also CORBA and DCOM, which is Distributed Component Object Model. All of these are language dependent on both ends, and an ideal situation would be to have the client end use a standard TCP IP protocol such as HTTP, and that's what an implementation of a web service does. The data is communicated between the client and the server by using SOAP, the Simple Object Access Protocol. It's implemented in XML, so you can transmit it readily over HTTP and understand it at the other end. The program sends standard SOAP formatted messages to one another, so it doesn't matter what language or implementation technique is being used at the other end. The client and the server communicate asynchronously, which is common on the Internet. The requester sends out a message and waits. Like a web page, the answer may come back, or it may not. The two ends of the communications link are not connected, and the only verification the requester gets is when the answer comes back. Why would you want to implement a web service? Well, with J2EE, the components of the service are written in Java, and they use the standard RMI interface for calling the remote methods and for formatting data for sending and receiving. Because they use the standard TCP IP connection, a standard web browser can be used as the client. That is, you can set up your service so it can be reached by anyone through their browser, or you can have a secure service that requires special software. Or you can do both. For example, say you have a warehouse full of items for sale. You can set up a web service that allows the general public to browse through the information on the items in the warehouse using their web browser. However, a customer could have an account with your firm and have special software with a secure link that makes it possible to order items from the warehouse. This arrangement has proven useful for wholesalers who have a specific list of large customers. As I'm sure you know, the TCP IP software installed on your computer is a stack. The stack is made up of different types of protocols. When you send a message down through that stack, each layer adds its own wrapper to the message being sent until it winds up as a standard packet to be sent over the net and unwrapped as it moves up through the stack on the receiving end. Well, a web service can be viewed as a new set of protocols added to the top of that stack. The HTTP protocol is the one used by the World Wide Web. All web service messages are wrapped in an HTTP wrapper before they are sent on down the TCP IP stack. On the receiving end, when a message comes off the top of the TCP IP stack, it's found to be an HTTP wrapper, which is removed, and the message inside the wrapper is passed up the stack to the next level. The encoding of the message is in XML format. That means it's a text message in a specific format. 
that format being the dictionary definition language and a set of tags of HTML. The XML message is in the standard form of an SOAP document. That is, SOAP is a specific set of XML tags for sending messages. It consists of the envelope portion, which is the wrapper, and the body portion, which is the text of the message. The message itself is for the next layer and consists of the text naming the method to be called and the data to be passed to it. WSDL stands for Web Service Definition Language. Among the information in the unwrapped message is a description of the service to be activated. Also found in here is the complete URL of the web service. This data contains a list of the methods to be called and the data to be passed to those methods, or if the message is coming back the other way, it's a return value from the methods that were called. UDDI stands for Universal Description Discovery and Integration. The web services are registered with a server, and the information here is used to find the one that this message is intended for. 